Today's unparalleled truths will be groundbreaking in that even though it's being delivered by me, a white European male, somehow, it's still true. What? What kind of witchcraft shall this be? Hey folks, it's God's comic Brad Stein. And you know what? One of the main expectations from the left is that no one, and I mean no one, no matter what their skin color or gender or lack of gender or any other attribute, may be reduced to a stereotype because that would be bigoted. They say this with a straight face, all the while cavalierly mocking the founding fathers of America, specifically by stereotyping them as, and I quote, dead white European men. They claim that since they were white and European and male and often Christian, then none of their ideas or philosophies for America can be given respect because it was tainted by their station and privilege in life. They claim this freedom to demean the founders' ideas is worthless by referencing the First Amendment. The, the First Amendment, I might remind you who haven't picked up on the ominous foreshadowing that was created by these same dead white guys. So if you really want to grow and engage culture as a good citizen, it's, it's important you start practicing some simple techniques, techniques I have acquired and studied and have applied to my comedy for years, though I do it surreptitiously because, well, nothing gives me more satisfaction than knowing that I'm either educating or dismissing someone's ideology all the while. They have no idea it's happening. Professor at Dallas Theological Seminary, Ramesh Richards, once watched my show and he said, I, I appreciate your subversive evangelism. That definitely lands in my top 10 category for compliments I'm proud of. Anyway, back to educating those that don't want to be. One simple but crucial technique when you're engaging someone who is postulating an idea is to always take a moment to identify the presupposition that's undergirding their foundational philosophy. Or, in layman's terms, what do they mean by that last statement? Remember, anyone that claims any knowledge or perspective about anything is presuming they're right about how they see things. Let me give you a real-time example. Often, people whose philosophy originates from leftist thought will, will have a handful of buzzwords they use to dismiss ideas or people they deem unworthy of serious consideration. One of the go-to guys that they enjoy dismissing, as I said, is the Founding Fathers. You can tell they have a disdain for these men because they don't refer to them as Founding Fathers, but instead with the apparently insulting catchphrase, dead white European males. Thus, it's imperative that you deconstruct what they're implying, or as I said, their presupposition, in order to understand how they see the world. Everyone Everyone has a worldview or a foundational belief as to how the world works and what's true about it. So when you hear the phrase dead white European males, the first fact you can gather is they are using this phrase pejoratively. In other words, they're defining a set of human beings using four words. Each word is implying there's something intrinsically bad about these guys. The first word is dead. For some reason, the left find dead people an easy target to insult. For one, dead people are the only people they don't have to worry about responding to them with facts. Probably because dead people are the only people they can count on who won't see through their illogical perspective and draw attention to its shortcomings. You know, if the only people you can convince your leftist ideology is good are, are, are dead people, you, you may, may want to reconsider the value of your perspective. You can assault dead people all day long, and yet... The only pushback you will ever get is from living people. Clearly, they don't count. But what's intrinsically bad about dead people? Why is being dead a disqualification for having something they left behind that might be useful to the living? Michelangelo's dead. He left behind the Pieta and the Sistine Chapel. Does anyone look at that magnificent art and comment, you know... Be much more profound if the artist were still alive. I mean, it was okay while he was alive, but <laughs> now look at it. No, actually the opposite is true. This get dead guy left us something so profound, it still moves us and inspires us. Hundreds of years after the artist lived. Why? 
Because great art, just like great ideas, has the advantage of standing the test of time. We have hundreds of years to literally compare the art to what came before and especially afterwards and see which of the two has more lasting impact and has proven to be a standard by which we can measure all future art. If you don't believe me, just take a look at what is now called modern art from Jackson Pollock, making art out of spilled and dribbled paint to a banana, duct tape to a wall. Any living human being that considers the banana as equal in technique and proficiency as, say, Rodin's The Thinker is more dead than anyone we might come across in a mausoleum. So I think we can rule out dead as a disqualifier for poignancy. Okay, so what's the second insult that is used as though it was profound? It's the color white. Dead white European males. Now, When referring to humans, the color white is applied to Anglo-Saxons. But of course, they're not actually white. As a matter of fact, the only truly white people we ever see is a result of a genetic aberration known as the albino. Whiteness, by the way, simply the result of a lack of melanin in a human being's epidermis. It's something you're born with or without. has absolutely nothing to save your mental capacities, your intelligence, your kindness, or lack thereof. Because... As we've observed on previous episodes of Brad Stein Has Issues, skin color is literally irrelevant when it comes to the accomplishments and the value of a human being. Skin has done and can do on its own nothing. It's only an earth suit used to contain the human organs, which includes the brain, which is used for drawing conclusions and philosophies and ideas. So when you hear someone use the term white to describe a human with disdain, You're listening to the words and thoughts of a racist human being, no matter what color they come in. The moment a human color is advanced, it's referencing race. How can anyone with a straight face purposefully insult someone's race and then declare, well, you know, we can't be racists? Hmm. Third word used is European. Of course, there's lots of humans that have come from Europe, and there are enormous ideas that have come from there as well. This area of the world encompasses what we refer to as the West. And yeah, the West has created and brought ideas to the world much different than what was created in the East. West gave humanity, I don't know, Greek logic and reason, as well as modern science and universities, hospitals, human rights, all derived from Christianity, I might add, as well as other insights derived from what we call the West and literally changed the world for the better. If you hear a leftist speak about how it's good that we fight for human rights, women's rights, children's rights, equality among all races, and the charitable expectation of the rich given to the poor. Make sure you remind them that every one of those ideas did not exist in human nature or culture until it was received into culture by the thinking life and commandments of Jesus Christ. Lastly, in our quadfecta, of diminishing the other, we have the word males. Left us believe there is something intrinsically suspect about half the human population. But why males? When you look at human history, every single great war, great nation created, great political system, as well as, I don't know, 99.99% of every single invention, idea, philosophy, and human advancement has come from the male blood, sweat, tears, and intellect. But fear not, ladies. Every single male ever birthed in human history came from the womb of a female. All women are literally, genetically, half of what makes men, men. Thus, you get to take half the credit for everything men have accomplished because without you, we wouldn't, nay, couldn't exist. So what is the problem with exalting men? Because the left has been taught that men have always been simply brutes, misogynistic cads who've oppressed women and confined them to the kitchen in the bedroom when clearly, All ancient women's secret desire was to earn a degree in women's studies. This episode doesn't have time to go into the myth that women hated their lot in life, but instead relished and took maximum pride in their role as ruler of the household. It's for another time, but for now, let me send you on your way with this. 
The next time you hear someone berate the founding fathers as racists and misogynists, just ask them this question. Hey, just curious. Do you enjoy the freedom of speech and liberty to malign, slander, and frankly, lie about a unique group of men who created the greatest nation in history, and while doing so, you never have to fear someone shooting you or jailing you or deporting you or censoring you for those idiotic views. If you appreciate the First Amendment, like you say, well, you can thank the Founding Father who invented it. Huh. Maybe there's something noble to be said about dead white European males. PC free is liberty. Hey folks, could you do this live white European male a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Brad Sign has issues. I don't care what format you're watching now. Go to YouTube, Brad Sign has issues. Subscribe now, like, share. Might do you some good.